We are finally back on Royals Franchise. And I know it's been a couple of weeks, maybe. But it should be no surprise to you, as I did mention before. When the NFL Draft comes around, I lock in on the main channel. And then I finally actually sleep. You don't do that during the entire week with the all-day streaming and, and videos and all-night stuff. So we are finally back. I'm excited to be here. And I appreciate your patience. ALDS action. It is Royals Rangers. And there was a, a good comment that I noticed that said, hey, if you jump in and play every game, you're going to win every game. There's, a, you know, there's no, there's no, like, you know, ups and downs for a team. And there's no real, like, playoff type of buildup and anticipation and what could happen. Just feels like we're going to beat everybody. So I think the way I'm going to do the playoffs now is doing player lock. And it was also very unanimously voted on to change the attributes for Cole Reagans to up his potential. Uh, it's at an 89 right now. You guys said, I think, bump it up to like 95, I want to say. I'm going to do 93. I think that's more than fair. He's, of course, one of the best pitchers in the league now in real life, uh, as I mentioned. So, you know, him having subpar potential where he can't get even to how good he is in real life not ideal anyone the Cy Young in the game too so maybe he didn't need a big a boost but you guys voted on it I, th I thought it was fair so I'll agree to your terms as we'll jump in as the Naturals have been defeated in the 2025 Texas League Championship Series by the Rockhounds that's our double a team it's unfortunate but it's not the focus right now we're really more worried about player development with those guys rather than overall team success but the two can go hand in hand let's go ahead and go player lock is Brady Singer really going to be my ace? What's the stamina like for Cole Reagans? I don't know. Well, it'd be a big start for Brady Singer, but I want to jump in with our MVP, MJ Melendez, sitting 429 right now. Three ribbies, no homers, but was a huge reason why we found any success in the regular season. He had an MVP-type season, even though I think he ended up finishing outside of the top three. He was excellent for pretty much every month besides September, once we really gave him a shot. He was not really even supposed to be starting this year, yet we got him in there, and he just absolutely went off. Nelson Velazquez is another one. He was exceptional this year. But you guys already know that if you've been following through the series. So... Let's see if we can roll through the Rangers in the playoffs. We're headed to Globe Life in DFW, Arlington, Texas here. Or I think it's right next to uh, Grand Prairie, but I think it's technically Arlington. It's like right across the street from uh, Jerry World there, AT&T Stadium for the Cowboys. But Royals, Rangers, Walker Bueller on the mound. I saw his face and I'm like, he looks familiar. It's Walker Bueller. Rangers picked him up, and he had a great season. Gave them way over 200 innings, won 18 games, which doesn't, like, that's not the only thing. If you win a bunch of games or lose a bunch of games, it might not mean you're actually pitching really well or really badly, but good or badly enough. However, his numbers were also fantastic. Sub-3 ERA as MJ Melendez hacks the first pitch, cut her in on the hands. We got a base runner on here with one out. Euler's going to be a tough guy to face. He has pretty good stuff, but I think also quite good control. He can be a workhorse. And they're wanting us to steal here. Either going to try to make a pickoff move here? No, he's going to go to the plate. We got a one-step lead. MJ gets to second. Nope, out of two. Maybe a little bit of a late jump there. I kind of expected that Walker Bueller was going to throw over. Not a super late jump. The manager told us to take off. Probably wouldn't have done it without that, so not ideal. However, it looks like Velasquez worked on, and Vinny Pasquantino hit a two-run home run to give us a 2-0 lead as Melendez is back up to face Walker Bueller here. Melendez, of course, he's having a killer season. 2025 home run derby champion, made the all-star team, of course, and he's just been such a pleasant surprise. But can't stop now. The job is not finished. Need to roll through the playoffs here. And the Rangers stand in our way. 
if we can at least split games here or, or close to it in Texas, go back to Kansas City, I really like our chances of winning at home. So see if that ends up happening. The fastball that we really got to hit. Uh, is it is it two games in Texas and then back to KC or is it three? I want to I wanted to say it was two and two. As MJ Melendez hits this ball really well to the right center field gap, that's gonna one hop off the wall. Melendez has decent speed. We're gonna hold up at two though. It's not exceptional speed. I think there's an argument to be made to you know push to three. They say don't make the first or the last out at third, but also I don't think making the second out at third is very good either. So we're going to hold up. If that maybe got into the corner, we could have tried something, but no. Didn't want to do it. And Velasquez actually is 0 for 1, so he didn't work on. That was actually the next inning where we got going. And that's going to be stopped. We're going to be out at 2 here. Out at 2. I couldn't see where the ball was. Uh, that's devastating. Melendez now has made two outs on the bases. I wish it would do camera work to actually follow the ball, but it didn't end up mattering again because every time MJ's made an out on the, the bases, we've come up big with the bats. J.D. Martinez with a three-run home run, and it's 5 nothing Royals as we are really getting to Walker Buehler. And I'll say on top of that, you also have Brady Singer who's pitched fairly well up to this point. Rangers do go to the bullpen, and it's actually a starter, Nathan Ivaldi. Been a really, really great player for them. And has had an interesting MLB career. He's a flamethrower early on with the Yankees. Couldn't really end up figuring it out. Bounced like all around the AL East, if I remember correctly. Maybe not quite every team, but definitely was a Ray. Had a crazy run in the postseason with the Red Sox in like circa 2018-ish. You guys know the, the year I'm talking about. And then it's been a pretty good player for the Rangers. One of the best pitchers in baseball, really. And now he's working out of the pen. Rangers trying to keep it close. And that is just a tough pitch to hit. Melendez times it up quite well. But just couldn't quite get the barrel of the bat on that. Fouled it straight back. But the timing was good. Piece of the cutter. Now, I'm kind of surprised the Rangers turned to Evaldi here. Because they were already down 5 nothing right, when he came in. And why not start him tomorrow? Is he just working out of the pen now? Is that Nathan Ivaldi's job? As MJ Melendez gets another hit back up the middle. 3 for 4 for MJ Melendez. Including an extra base hit. And we're going to try not to make an out on the bases this time around. I know I can move the camera with right stick, but it's just... It's a little slow, it's a little difficult. Unless you track the ball as Velasquez goes down swinging. And now two outs for Nolan Gorman. 3-0. and oh. This actually could be an interesting steal spot. But I'm going to say Gorman probably takes. And that is ball four. So we had had second either way. Probably better just not to run. And now 0-2 to J.D. Martinez. Got to let him swing the bat here. Big hit, J.D. And he strikes out swinging. Still holding the lead, but there's not a lot of time left for the Rangers. Still, anything could happen, though. But we end up winning the game. Game one goes in favor of our Royals. Vinny Pasquantino with a two-run home run. I think J.D. Martinez also had a three-run shot for our only runs of the game. And I'm surprised that he was not the choice for player of the game. He hit a home run. They both went one for four. But more RBIs for J.D. Martinez. And honestly, my player of the game might have been Brady Singer. Goes six strong. Does allow nine base runners. Five hits, four walks. But struck out seven and only two earned runs. Game two, we have Merrill Kelly on the mound. And it is two and two. And then one, of course, if we need it. So Merrill Kelly, we made a move for at the deadline. We wanted a more reliable pitcher in the mix. Kelly ended up being the guy. He's had somewhat of an up and down season for us. And this is a huge start. His first start in the postseason as a Royal. He's only under contract for this year. It's a complete rental. And this is a big, big game. Face a lot of good hitters. Three lefties in a row to start the Texas Rangers lineup here. Evan Carter, Nathaniel Lowe, Corey Seager. They also have Adolis Garcia, Josh Young, who hits lefties significantly better. 
Garcia obviously can just kill anybody. We have the roof open here at Globe Life. We have an afternoon game here in the playoffs. We'll face Jordan Montgomery, who also had an incredible season for the Rangers. I mean, it's no question why they're here. Their pitching was phenomenal. Now, we did get to their last great pitcher in Walker Bueller. So, we could definitely end up getting to Jordan Montgomery as well. He had a great season last year with the Rangers in real life. Of course, is with the Diamondbacks, I believe now, in real life. But I don't think I've actually even seen him make a start for them. I don't know that he has or he hasn't. But I, I think he is on the Diamondbacks. Go so, 0-1 oh, here to Nathaniel Lowe. Beryl Kelly can just locate. I honestly think it's going to be no problem. But if we start to lose, you know, you know, our spots and it drifts either out of the zone or over the middle of the plate, that's when this Rangers team can really take advantage of you because they have guys with some serious power, obviously, like Adolis Garcia, Corey Seager. But they also have guys with incredible patience, like Evan Carter. So we don't want to give free passes. And we'll just try to carve through this lineup. Kelly doing a good job already. As Corey Seager got a hold of that one. Deep to right field. And it hugs the right field line. And did that hit off the foul pole? Corey Seager somehow gets his hands in. Not even a mistake from Merrill Kelly at all. Corey Seager somehow gets his hands in. And it murders the baseball. I mean, I guess only 96 off the bat. It, it wasn't hit especially hard, but he hit it hard enough on a pitch that was destined to hit him. And it did go square off the pole. It's a cutter, I mean, in off the plate. I, I, don't, I don't know how Corey Seager was able to do that. But, you know, that can be the trouble with pitch to contact, guys. Is if you allow people to make contact, especially a lineup as talented as this one, they can make you pay. They can really make you pay. 2-0 to Adolis Garcia. 3-0. This is not good. I don't really want to issue free passes. I think Garcia would be someone that would swing 3-0. And he does. We didn't want to give him a cookie there, but we did go with a fastball. Maybe he's going to be sitting on fastball. We can throw the changeup for a strike. That counts. 3-2, fighting back, working back. And what's our put-away pitch here? I think we actually go pitch to contact. Cutter, low and away. Strike three. Garcia doesn't even get the bat off the shoulder. Guess he thought it was going to fall out of the zone. Not quite. So, could have been better, could have been worse. one nothing's fine. Had to score one anyway. And we did more than that. Kyle Isbell, RBI double following a big-time home run to give us a 2-1 to -one lead. And it seems like our lineup is going to get to whomever the Rangers throw out there. You'd assume that these are their two best starters that we're facing back-to-back -back in Bueller and Montgomery. They had a Faldi out of the pen, too, though. But they haven't played, right? They were straight into the division series. No wild card game for the Rangers. So they were able to save these guys. And their pitchers are really not off to a phenomenal start here. We'll, uh, we'll see if we can limit what the bats can do. Ground ball right back to Merrill Kelly. He'll throw on to first. Maybe rush that slightly. But we'll get the out. Marcus Simeon hitting it in the sixth spot for the Rangers. Maybe righty-righty they decided to move him down. But this is a guy who historically I don't think has struggled against righties at all. It's kind of surprised to see him kind of buried in the lineup a little bit. Which is, uh, I mean... Yeah, he's just another one of their great hitters that we really do need to be careful with. And if I remember, Marcus Simeon is a fastball killer. Maybe we'll go off speed, off speed, off speed to try and end this at bat. Ground ball, nice play from Vinny Pasquantino, making it look easy. And it's not a particularly difficult play, but I've seen some bad hops. I've seen some bad animations in this game. And it's nice when things just go right. Kelly's been quite good so far. Of course, the solo shot to Seeger, but other than that, no particularly hard hit balls, and that one is going to be another hit 
for the Rangers. Second one here in this game. Ezekiel Duran, the former Yankee, shoots one just past the third baseman as it'll bring up Jonah Heim. And Heim is another guy who's a pretty good player. A very good hitting catcher. Who's also good defensively. And that cutter, it seems like these Rangers are going to be on. Because again, that's off the plate. And, I mean, Heim didn't get all of it clearly. But was able to drive it a decent way uh, for where that pitch was. So if we're going to keep throwing that cutter, it's really got to be in off the plate. Really cannot leave it anywhere close. Or else they're going to kill it. We go up 5-1 now. As our bats continue to thrive... The pitch count for Merrill Kelly is in a really, really good spot. And I think that's another thing we can do with this cutter. Is throw it for strikes away. Because it, it, it never is a strike, right? Until at the last second we want it to catch. Peel Badu has a little bit of power. But never really had a strong contact tool. And I, I gotta ask the umpire after the game where that missed. Because I, for the life of me, do not know. We'll try to get the fastball down. It's fairly well from Akil Badu. As the Rangers continue to target either side of Michael Garcia. He's probably our best defender. Maybe Kyle Isbell. But now back-to-back -back, uh, singles that we've seen have been to either side of Michael Garcia. Maybe pitch location was a problem. 2-0 now to Evan Carter, who will let us walk him. He's not really going to be a guy that chases. We're going to need to throw strikes, but preferably not directly down the middle like that cutter was. Good fastball. Carter out in front of it. Should be out number one, and it is. Let's see if we can get a double play to get out of this inning. Low does not run especially well. And we have cutters and sinkers to induce weak contact. I'd love to get something on the ground. Runner takes off to avoid the double play. And he is safe. Duran swipes second there. Or it's Akil Badu, excuse me. <laughs> Duran was last inning. Uh, he's running pretty fast. 20 miles per hour there. All right. Duke could be a tough player to uh, keep off third base here. Hopefully we can keep him uh, from scoring this inning. He's trying to get Nathaniel Lowe out, but he's proving to be difficult. Here's a fly ball to the gap, but Duke scores easily. And Lowe has an RBI single. Rangers bring it within three. Okay, well, things don't get much easier. We have a lead. I do want to go after Corey Seager for that reason, but I also, I do not want to, you know, give him any pitch to hit. I really, really don't. So, with that being said, we do have a free base to work with, but Dolores Garcia comes up next. That's somebody I really do not want to face either. So it puts us in a tough spot. How do we actually pitch to Corey Seager? And I think we're going to really try and pitch around him and see if he'll get himself out. There's the cutter off the plate. Hit a home run on that pitch earlier. Maybe get it a little bit more in, and now it's a strikeout. Or maybe a little bit more down. Same pitch that Garcia looked at for strike three earlier. Fastball. Is he not swinging all of a sudden? I bet he chases the curveball, though. 0-2. Oh, and he takes it. The patience of Adolis Garcia is incredible right now. He fouls that one off. Strike three. Cutter up and away. Garcia expands. Seems like whatever I say, the opposite is about to happen. I'm congratulating Adolis Garcia on his incredible patience and complimenting that great eye. Or even he took some strikes, too, and then chases a cutter up and away. Bold decision, but a welcome one on our side of things. 5-2. Yeah. need Kelly to dial in. If he can come away with six innings of or of two or three run ball, I think that puts us in a good spot as that is called for a strike, which actually should set up this cutter. And we might see a similar swing here. The one we just saw from Adolis Garcia, but Young takes it. That is strike three on the black. You really can't locate it much better than that. A beautiful pitch for Merrill Kelly, who's starting to dial in a little bit. Pop up. This could be a play for Vinny Pasquantino. He's going to have to reach over the railing, and he does. Nice play from the Pasquatch. Or out number two. And now we'll face Duran. He singled past the diving Michael Garcia earlier. 
And if we just get him to roll over, I think Garcia is going to be able to make a play if it's not hit so hard. That got a little bit too much of the plate. That's right down the middle. Don't want to do that. No one's really chased the curveball at all today. Maybe Duran will do it. And Vinny Pasquantino continues to get action over there at first base. And Kelly, again, starting to look pretty good. 7-2 now, though. J.D. Martinez, RBI single. Vinny Pasquantino, RBI single. As we were going to station to station. And getting those runs in. You got to love it. 7-2 now. As our bats really should have done enough up to this point. You score seven runs, you got to be able to win that game. And I'd like to see the statistics on that. How often does an MLB team score seven runs and win? It's got to be a lot. Nice play from Garcia. Good pick. Throw on to Pasquantino. Gets out number one. And our bullpen is going to be extremely fresh. But still want to get, you know, more distance from Merrill Kelly. He's only at 58 pitches right now. There's 59 for strike two. But do down 0-2, and we can probably just throw two straight balls, see if he chases. There's a curveball. No swing. But you're going to see another off-speed pitch below the zone. Here's the changeup. I think we will get a swing here. We do, but Badu gets a piece. Staying alive. I think we go back to it. And if he takes it, maybe we try the fastball low. But he takes it, swings at it, and uh, takes a seat on the bench. Big strike three. I can see he didn't take it, but he, he took a swing at it, is what I meant to say. Two outs now, top five. Obviously shaking off the rust here as a commentator. Not my best day. But that's okay. We're going to lock in, just like Merrill Kelly, as he is dealing fastball blown by Evan Carter. And if he's too late on 94, don't give him a break to show him what he's sitting on. Back to the fastball, but he absolutely crushed that. Way early. Ready for it that time. Wish we'd see exit velo, because that thing was... It, it looked demolished. Takes the change up. Maybe we just spot the fastball low and away. Cutter might have been a better choice. Fastball down. Struck fairly well from Carter. Melendez lets it fall in front of him. Now that's 93 speed on the bases with two outs, yes. But you think that... Yeah, a double could probably score a Carter with 93 speed. Don't want to give him the chance. Here's a pop-up. Pasquantino who's had a ton of action today. Makes the play in foul territory. And we are continuing to be in the driver's seat. 7-2. Would like to get even more runs up. But it's still 7-2. As we'll face the heart of the Rangers order. 3-4 and 5. Seager, of course, has homered in this game. Off the cutter. Let's try and throw it away. And he chases. Rolls over. Well located pitch. I mean it probably is called a ball there. But Seeger goes after it. And uh, can't put good contact. Can't sit back on it. Does Garcia chase the same cutter that got him out last time up? Not competitive. Too high. Too high. But if we locate it well. I think he either chases or we have the chance that it catches the zone. We get a strikeout looking. This could be in play for Velasquez here as he ranges over to foul territory and makes the play just beside the wall. And yeah, I mean, you can tell. I keep saying it, but Merrill Kelly is really locking in. That cutter's starting to go to work. And when you throw it away like that, it stays on the plate for so long until it becomes a really tough pitch to hit. Josh Young flying out to right center. Nice play from the center fielder. And Kelly, I think... Should be out for the seventh. And now it's 11 to 2. Gorman RBI double. Pasquantino RBI double. Kyle Isbell two run home run. 11 to 2. And Kelly, of course, will stay out here. And now we can really just attack these hitters. Because, I mean, Merrill Kelly could give up five runs. And we'd be feeling pretty good about where we are in the game. It'd be 11 to 7. It's a four run cushion. It's in the seventh oh. inning. We are really going to attack these hitters. Now, when you get to two strikes, you can try to make them chase, as Marcus Simeon does. Grounds out to Vinny Pasquantino, who, again, has been plenty involved today. And the first baseman typically is, but a lot of putouts for 
of Vinny Pasquantino, or a lot of uh, individually made plays. It's a put out when he catches it right from, uh, you know, an infielder. But a lot of individually made plays, whether it's fly outs or we're just getting the ground ball and, and tagging the bag. 0-2 to Duran. And that's really, that's the way I want to start pretty much all of these counts for the rest of the game. Go 0-2 and then see what happens. If they get a single early on, whatever. But you want to keep that pitch count as low as possible and really pitch to our lead. 84, now 85 pitches for Kelly. And Duran is going to really make that pitch count go up. He is fighting and fouling off pitches. And I really would like to get Kelly through the eighth inning if possible, but it might not be. Pasquantino with another play. As now we have two outs for Jonah Heim. Again, attack these hitters. Ground ball. Guess who? Vinny Pasquantino out number three. And I think that should get Merrill Kelly the eighth inning. It'd be a travesty to pull him. And they go to Hector Neris. Nelson Velasquez solo shot, though. I mean, the runs are pouring on. And it is a big Royals win. Corey Seager with another home run, but it was not enough when he was the only guy that showed up. 17 hits for the Royals. This lineup is unreal. We had so many innings where we scored multiple runs. You are going to win games when that happens. So we have won two in a row in Texas. And now we have home field advantage. Nelson Velasquez with a pair of homers in this game. I mean, everyone was hitting. Jordan Montgomery got shelled. And I'll tell you what, didn't get a lot easier for any of the relievers. So, Rangers really in a tough, tough spot right now. We're going back to Kansas City. Now, they do have Jacob deGrom. And then Walker Bueller would pitch again. Not about deGrom. Well, all right. We're going back to Kansas City. Do I want to pitch with Chris Bubich, though, is the question. And I'm not sure that I do. What's the stamina looking like on Cole Reagans? We're going back to Kaufman. Quick counts on. Reagans is ready to go. Let's win a series. We're not going to Bubich. Bobby Witt having a heck of a postseason, by the way. Hitting 353 pair of home runs. But I guess everyone's hitting right now. Maybe not J.D. Martinez. He got really unlucky in game one of the wild card series, but I mean, everyone's really hitting quite well in this lineup right now. We're going to go Reagans versus DeGrom. Ace versus eight. Or ace. The southpaw against, I mean, the best pitcher of the 2010s when healthy or 2010s in the 2020s. I mean, DeGrom has been unbelievable. I know that seems crazy to proclaim him as the best pitcher, but DeGrom at his peak was unbelievable. Multiple Cy Youngs in the late 2010s. Almost won another one in 2020. He has just not been able to stay healthy. But, I mean, even if you don't think he's the best pitcher of the 2010s, I get it. He, he debuted at 26 years old in 2014. But, I mean, he had a, a 1.7 ERA in 2018 struck out 269 in 217 innings just incredible numbers for Duram only allowed 10 home runs in 217 innings I mean that's unbelievable that's averaging 0.4 home runs per 9 innings pitched that's just insane a FIP at 1.98 led the league ERA plus at 218 if you don't know what that number means any baseball stat with plus in it, it has 100 as the average. So if he has a 218 ERA plus, that is 118% uh, better than league average. So if it was 120, that's 20% better. So yeah, it's just it's just super ridiculous. One of the best pitching seasons I've ever seen. As Paul Reagan's is the next man up. He won the AL Cy Young this year, not DeGrom. And gets a big K of Nathaniel Lowe. Now, the Rangers, I noticed, are still going lefty, lefty, lefty to start. Bupic, even if he was on the mound, he's a lefty as well. You'd think they might have changed it up a little bit, but no. 
They're sticking with what they've got, and Reagans is touching triple digits to start this one back at Kaufman. He is fired up, ready to go, and that's called the ball. 3-1 to Corey Seager. Again, if there's somebody to pitch around in this lineup, it is this guy. Garcia's great as well. I mean, you got to worry about Evan Carter. They, they've got some tremendous bats. No Wyatt Langford up here, but don't let Corey Seager beat you. We're okay with the base runner with two outs, and we'll go after Garcia. Another great hitter. Do you have in front of that uh, fastball? Early on 100. Well, good luck with the changeup, buddy. He does get a piece of it. Okay, well, we're going to go back to it. Cutter could be a good choice as well. 2-2. Two, two. I do want to try and keep that pitch count fairly low. We're already approaching 20 pitches. And with quick counts, there are no quick and easy innings. Strikeout, Garcia goes down looking. Very good inning for Cole Reagans. A couple of punchies. And now we will face DeGrom. Did pitch 200 innings this year, just about. ERA just over three. But the strikeout numbers are way down for DeGrom. Only 159 in 198 innings. Oh, he is not the same guy. I mean, he still throws gas. Oh my goodness, still throwing 99 plus. But 72 hit per nine, 66K per nine. He still had a great year, but he is not the same guy. And we might be able to take advantage. Not really a great pitch to hit. Bobby Witt Jr. doesn't care. Base hit right back up the middle. Well-timed and, and uh, well hit from Bobby Witt Jr. Now we have a ton of speed on first base. And that could create problems for Jacob Durham. There goes Bobby Witt Jr. That's stolen easily. Why do you even throw through there? Why? You're just asking for trouble at that point. And now we have a runner in scoring position for MJ Melendez. He's a hit machine. That's a base hit back up the middle. Played off the hop, mishandled in center. And that's an easy score. Absolutely ripped from MJ Melendez. 112 off the bat. You know, I thought for a minute that this could be caught. Witt Jr. starts running right away. He got a tremendous read on the ball. And MJ Melendez comes up clutch again. I bet you can't throw it there if you're DeGrom. I mean, 100 to 100, right? But these are big league hitters, and that is right down the middle as we're actually going to hold it to here. DeGrom is not locating well at all. Three base hits to start. And of course, this is legend difficulty. And why do I use timing? Because it matters more with the player's attributes rather than my own ability. We've talked about that. But that is another fastball pretty much right down the middle. Still legend difficulty, but we're still crushing. Gorman, 333 this postseason. OPS over 1,100. And I thought that was going to be a really good pitch to hit. But it was a nasty changeup at the bottom of the zone. But he threw another fastball down the middle. And these pitches are nasty. I mean, he still has crazy movement. Still has crazy velo on these pitches. And if we're getting ready to hit the fastball down the middle, all of these other pitches that he's throwing are working off of the fastball. I'm reading fastball out of the hand, and then it's not. And we've taken a couple of bad swings here back to back to back. That, that can't be strike three. Probably should have been. Because I, I, I think that was a swing, and the location was amazing. Gorman catches a huge break. And it didn't matter. Ball don't lie. Struck out. Really well-spotted changeup. I think I was out in front. I mean, DeGrom's stuff is just still nasty as ever. The per nines just aren't as good. And that's a really, really good pitch from DeGrom. We got swing happy there, and he works out of the gym. MJ Melendez does come through with a big RBI single. But, I mean, Jacob DeGrom works out of it. And that's what an ace can do. You know, sometimes you're going to get into trouble. Everybody does on the mound. But the great ones can work out of it. And even at this stage in his career as a 36-year-old, you know, DeGrom was able to stay healthy in 2025 here. And, uh, you know, put his team in a position to win and work out of a big jam. Big strikeout. Young can hold up. Sword for Cole Reagans. You guys don't know what a sword is. It's uh, basically baseball pitching slang for when uh, you get a nasty check swing where it kind of looks like you're swinging a sword. 
uh, and you do one of those like half swings instead of like an actual full rip at the ball. Finally, somebody puts it in play off of Reagan's. Got him. Big out. He's been a strikeout machine so far. It's been tough for these hitters to get on the fastball. And can you blame them? It's at 100. I mean, occasionally you're seeing 98, 99. But Reagan's keeps dialing it up. Cutter. A break the bat of Simeon? Sure sounded like it. Let's go to that nasty slider, though. Not a pitch I throw a ton with him, but it is disgusting. Simeon goes down swinging, and it's going to be one of those games for Cole Reagans. He is going to dominate. And the pass squatch works a walk. He's starting to play really well for us. I mean, 2025 is looking like the true, real breakout season for Vinny Pasquantino in this franchise. I love it. 2026 hopefully is even better. Now we got Rake Fraley. Two balls, one strike. We made a move for him this year. He was with the Blue Jays. If you watch Red's franchise, you know what Rake Fraley can do. And I'm calling him Rake instead of Jake for a reason. That's all this guy does is Rake. He was the clutchest player in that series. He was incredible. And I'm hoping for more of the same from him in this postseason run. That was a fastball being down the middle, maybe a little high in the zone. And we just can't seem to put it in play. 2-2 two, two to Fraley. It's a good pitch to hit, just couldn't stay back on the changeup. Yeah, it's a, the changeup is, is nasty. When you have to account for hitting 100 on Legend, it, it's, it's yielding some pretty bad swings on it. I'm just early, but of course, look at the location. You're not going to hit that. And that changes right down the middle. Michael Garcia hits it deep to left center field. Going back, making the play, is the center fielder. Is Evan Carter out there? No, I don't think so. It looks like a created player. Is that Wyatt Langford? Who is that supposed to be? I can't quite read the name. I apologize. Great range. It is Wyatt Langford playing center. So I guess he is up. He just wasn't in the lineup last game, right? I think I would have noticed, but yeah. Wyatt Langford playing center and playing a good center. Garcia hit it well, but I mean, Kaufman gets pretty deep. Just didn't quite have the power. And that should be the inning. Going the short way there. Marcus Simeon looking fancy. But the short way, I think, might have ended up being an even longer throw than second to first. He went up, I mean, pretty far in the hole. And here is Wyatt Langford looking like... A 50-year-old man with those sideburns and, and the build. Looks, I mean, completely nothing like him here in the game. Great work from the show, as always. Their dedication to realism is unbelievable. I'm so immersed. So immersed. Five Ks now for Reagans as Langford goes back to the dugout. And Duran. We, we saw him get a hit yesterday, or two days ago now that we're back in KC. But hitting sub 150 as Vinny Pasquantino makes another play over the railing. We saw one in Texas. And now one in Kansas City. And Reagans continues to go right after these hitters. 2-1 though, Carter in the driver's seat. Misses on the fastball. And I think we're going to get a real bad swing here on this slider. Strike three. Cole Reagans is dealing. That's my ace. What a performance so far from Reagans. Three innings. That's six strikeouts. Incredible. Base hit. MJ Melendez in a right field. That was a great spot from DeGrom. Really fastball in on the hands. But on the plate, Melendez has really, really quick hands. He's able to go and get that thing and, and pull it right to right field. Stop throwing the change up, man. It's, it's very clear I am not going to be able to do anything with that pitch today unless it's right down the middle, like it was to Michael Garcia. And even then, that was an out. A wild pitch. Not far enough away to get to second. And that is obliterated. Nelson Velasquez got a fastball middle-middle and didn't miss it. 466. 117 off the bat. I think that went up to the concourse. That is one of the longest home runs you were ever likely to see here. That was crushed. And Velasquez didn't have to do much. DeGrom really did all the work. 
put it 99 miles per hour right down the middle. All Velasquez had to do was put the barrel on it, and that pitch velocity did the work. That thing was crushed. Look out, guy coming down the stairs. Oh my goodness. Hang time of nearly seven seconds. It's a Marquette King punt. There's one for you. Oh my goodness, what a shot. Another ball ripped. If DeGrom leaves the changeup up, we're able to put pretty good swings on it. It's just when it's below the zone and we're sitting heater, which has worked so far. I mean, we're up 3 nothing. You know, that's also 117 off of that. Good Lord. Exit below are crazy with these perfect perfects. You're in franchise mode. Typically don't get that in Diamond Dynasty. 3-1. Jake Fraley's not had a good postseason. Vinny Pasquantino has. But small samples. Well spotted fastball from DeGrom. 12 ball, 16 strikes this inning. Not a good ratio at all. He's been wild. And I, th I think you have to protect there. Good timing, just a, a better pitch from DeGrom. That change up. We were able to stay on it, stayed up. But ground ball out ends the inning. Damage was done, though. Nelson Velasquez, I mean, got every stitch of this one. This was destroyed. Into the fourth inning now. Only one base runner for the Rangers up to this point. It was a Corey Seager walk, right? And I'd like to keep it that way. As Seager makes his way back up to the plate. He should be able to hit these fastballs, but a one hole one away on the black. I mean, nobody can hit that. Seager might be on strikeout watch here. Takes the cutter. But then when we slow it down and make it a slider, I think this is strike three. We get to peace. I think the name of the game to Corey Seager is going to be away, away, away. Don't want to give him anything to pull. And there's another strikeout for Reagan. Seager dives down into the dirt. Chase that curveball and can't get any of it. Seven Ks now for Cole Reagans. It is the fourth inning. Trying to make Garcia number eight. He's down the count one and two. That was 101 from Reagans. Oh, how does Garcia take that slider? I don't think Reagans knew either. Change up for strike three. Oh, I thought we had him. Good piece from Garcia. We're gonna throw, uh, throw him, show him triple digits here. It's a piece again, that was 101. Reagans is pumping gas. Curveball strike three. Garcia again gets a piece. I mean, he's getting this pitch count up. How about a swing and a miss for strikeout number eight? That's not where we wanted it. He stayed on the slider super late on it though. You're going to get what you want. You want the fastball? Here you go. Strike three. Didn't want it. Froze him. Cole Reagans now has struck out eight. Garcia can't believe it. Arguing with the umpire. He's got to get tossed. He's got to get ejected from this game. Talking like that. Arguing balls and strikes. That's right there as well. You just don't know the zone, buddy. Jake Fraley. That's going to be a single. Infield single, but a single nonetheless. Finally working on base. But I'll tell you, we're on the verge of chasing Jacob DeGrom out of here. He's coming up on 80 pitches. He might not be able to work out of this inning. Depending on what happens in this Michael Garcia AB. And he gets a good result there. I mean, fastball in on the hands. Wanted to take it, but didn't want to strike out looking. Just a really, really good pitch. Ready for me and has really struggled. I think a hit and run could be good. Two and one. You know DeGrom is going to try to work over the zone here. He doesn't want to go 3-1. Runner takes off. Fermin gets a pretty good piece of this thing. That's going to be a really tough play for the left fielder, but he makes it, and we might be doubled up. Throw from Seager on target. Fraley's out. That ends the fourth. I, I thought it was getting over his head. By the time we tried to send him back, he was already past second base. It was too late. Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite us. 3-2 and two to Josh Young. Now, he does hit lefties really well. We got to be careful. 
He fouls off the four-seamer very early on it. I'm a little bit afraid to throw the changeup in the zone, but that's where it's going. And Young gets a piece. Very late. Very early on the four-seam, very late on the changeup. It's quite an interesting combo. And he's early again on the heater. I mean, he's, he's fouling off everything. And some of these are actually quite scary swings. Cutter! Catches the zone. Goodbye, Young. Nine strikeouts for Reagans. As double digits is not even just a possibility at this point. It's almost a certainty. 75 pitches into the fifth is not great. But with quick counts, it's just something that's going to happen. Ground ball. Finally, somebody put something in playoff, Reagans. Defenders were getting bored. Fastball popped up. For mean should be there. And he is. And Reagans continues to cruise. Cruz and Cole at it again. And it's their favorite rel reliever, Nathan Avaldi here. All right, well, I think we should be able to put some pretty good swings on it. Avaldi's not particularly tough, but we'll see. They got him in the bullpen for a reason. Not trusted to be a starter. That cutter was nasty. Oh, no. Full count to MJ Melendez. Searching for that first postseason home run, and Evaldi, I guess, is dialed in. Splitter up and away. It's a tough pitch to take. We time it up a little bit early, and I, I take it back. Evaldi's dominant. I, I, we can't square anything up. He, the, the pitch speed variation's incredible. And his location has been even better. Uh, I, you really don't want to throw a splitter up, but it's also a tough pitch because you're never looking for it. It didn't hang in the zone enough. It just it stayed up. So far, it's just been the walk to Corey Seager for the Rangers. That's all I'll say about that. The Cole Reagans has pitched pretty well here. And there is a base hit for Ezekiel Duran. Here's, here's the deal, right? Cole Reagans is already going to be at 91 pitches here. He was never going to make it nine. Never, ever, ever was going to go nine innings in this game with quick counts. So that kind of just is what it is, right? Velo is still pretty good, but it's not 101 like it was. It's down to 99 now. Getting a little bit of tired, a little bit tired. Starting to show some signs of wear. And that is a walk to Evan Carter, who just refused to chase out of the zone. Reagan's going to be coming up near 100 pitches now. And we're going to have to get somebody going. Schreiber and Lewisaga probably will. No. Let's get let's get Lewisaga and Sam Maul up. Two lefties coming up. And this Rangers team, they've struggled with lefties today. Or one in particular. And maybe that says more about Cole Reagan than it does about lefties in general. Oh, that's a disgusting pitch. How does Lowe take that? Stot him up. Fastball. Good swing. Pitch number 101 for Reagans is at 99, and it freezes Nathaniel Lowe. That is his 10th strikeout as he has reached double digits here in the sixth. Seager gets a piece of that one, and that could be the final batter for Cole Reagan. Fraley's underneath it. We'll head to the bottom of the sixth. You really can't put forth much of a better effort than what we've seen from Cole Reagan's here in this ALDS game three. What a performance. Gorman smokes this to right. There's a base hit as we're finally starting to figure out Evaldi maybe. Pitch to hit. Pasquantino did. And this thankfully will not be caught. Garcia's got a great arm though. Do we test it? With one out, we are testing it. Here's the play at the plate. He is out. It's, it's a bold send with one out. We knew Garcia had a good arm. It was going to take a really good throw to get us down at the plate. We're up 3 nothing, And now it's going to take a single to get that run in. But I, 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 do you push it there? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Seems like in this case, maybe not. <sighs> Strike three. Fraley goes down. Not great. We will make a pitching change. It'll be Jonathan Loisaga. 
He's a beast, and he's ready to go. Can we get two innings out of him? That's going to be the question. I'm not going to, like, shoot for it, but we'll see how this first inning goes, and then we can make the, the call. And he's it's not going to be two. That's a base hit for Adolis Garcia. He'll have a stand-up double here. Maybe even more if we don't get that ball in. Okay. Fastball, strike three at the top of the zone. These Rangers hitters have not been ultra-aggressive. Very comfortable going back to the dugout, not swinging the bat. One, two, good pitch. Ground ball, Gorman Garcia advances to third, but with two outs, not overly concerned about it. Got to make one pitch here to Marcus Simeon, and we're out of this inning. Ground ball at Michael Garcia. Easy play. And not a bad inning for Loizaga. Made a mistake to Adolis Garcia. We paid for it, but in the end, no run score. We're going to be okay. And Loizaga actually might stay out for the righties, and then we'll turn it over to Mole for the lefties. That's definitely a possibility. I think it's exactly what we're going to be able to do. We have two right-handed batters before we get back up to Evan Carter, Corey Seager, and the Nathaniel Lowe part of the lineup. It's the seventh inning. We're going to get MacArthur ready to go, but... Of course, he's not going to pitch until the ninth. Even if it's not a save situation, which it is right now, but even if it becomes like four or five nothing, I think we're still going to get him to work. But got to get to that point first. Not really doing a great job of getting insurance runs. Evaldi's really settled in and uh, taken over this game for the Rangers. We got to DeGrom, but I mean, since then, it hasn't been much. And it's the splitter, man. The splitter's been a tough pitch. He's located it quite well, and I haven't really been able to sit back on any type of changeup so far. And when you're sitting fastball and, and, you know, doing damage off fastballs, that can be a really tempting thing to continue. But if he's going to go 50% splitters, maybe we don't look for the fastball so much. We'll see. There it is. There's a fastball at 97. Well, all right. Good pitch. That's a ball. Langford takes it, but I like the spot. Two balls, two strikes. Four seam top of the zone. Ooh, that got down. That got into dangerous territory. We go back to the slurve. Too much plate. Ground ball in the hole. Bobby Wood Jr. can't make the play. It's another leadoff hitter on for the Rangers off Jonathan Loizaga. But he can definitely induce weak contact. Can be a steady diet of sinkers for Ezekiel Duran. If he strikes out, great. It's a ground ball double play, even better. Ground ball at Garcia. On to second one. Back on a first double play. Loizaga does the job. And uh, now we're going to go ahead and make a change to Sam Mole. Loizaga did the, did the job, cleared the bases. That's all you can ask for. It could honestly just be for one out. Sam Maul into the game. And the reason I say that, because if we just turn it over to our closer, are we going to do that with two outs? Here's a ground ball. It'd be an easy play for the pitcher, but Carter runs so well, makes it close. But do we just say, hey, we're going to bring on our closer for the save. He's our closer for a reason. But Sam Maul came on and threw a lot, you know, like uh, three pitches. So, I don't know. He could theoretically get through two batters. And then we turn it over to MacArthur for just one batter. But you don't typically do that with your closer. I don't know. I think we go to MacArthur and just try to win the game. I'll tell you what. The Rangers are doing a great job of exploiting my weaknesses. Every one of the pitchers they go to features a pretty good changeup. We saw it with DeGrom earlier and then Evaldi. And now it's going to be A.J. Minner. His fastball cutter changeup. And the change is tough. The cutter's tough, too. Left the change up in the zone. Ripped by Nelson Velazquez. 107 off the bat. Straight at Wyatt Langford. And now it'll be lefty-lefty. Gorman versus Minner, but he does hit lefties pretty well. So this is not a lost cause. But a, a, a tick late on the fastball. It's just a tick late. And A.J. Minner goes 1-2-3. But it is closing time here in Kansas City. Can we get some hype in the in the in the crowd? Fire up! We might be looking at game over. Because we turn to number 66. 
the six foot seven hulking closer, James McArthur. And by the way, you look back to what I said at the start of the year. I don't get what the Royals are doing with Will Smith. McArthur is going to be their closer. Are you watching Royals baseball? It's exactly what happened. And now, he has a chance to send us to the ALCS for the first time since 2015, I want to say. And it's a ground ball base hit for Nathaniel Lowe. Not a great start. And now it's Corey Seager. Try, let's go for the strikeout. And we got it. Seager down swing. Great. Great 12-6 curveball there. The old Uncle Charlie gets Corey Seager to go down. And now we have MacArthur for Garcia. And this could be game over. 1-2. How is he elevating that sinker? It's below the zone. So is this 12-6. Goodbye. Strike three. MacArthur gets another one. And that leadoff single doesn't really look so bad now. 2-1 to Young. Slider just foul. It could have been trouble down the third base line. A little bit more off the plate. And this is actually going to fall in for a base hit. It's going to roll all the way to the wall. Velasquez plays it off the wall. And they're actually going to send the runner home. Here's the speed. Not in time on the throw. Nathaniel Lowe gets in there. And it's an RBI double for Josh Young. And now the tying run. Comes to the plate in the form of Jonah Heim. That curveball's been the pitch, but Heim doesn't want it. Okay. No, don't fall in. It's a little flare to right field, and it drops. Three to two Rangers, down by only one now. Very early, but that's all he needed. MacArthur trying to settle in. Swing strike on the slider, and the rally. 12-6, Chopper, Gorman charging, throws to first, Royals win. And the Royals are headed to the American League Championship Series. Heart attack there at the end. But our closer did indeed close the door. He just let a few people come in first. <laughs> but not too many. Still a good ratio. Royals have not lost a game in the playoffs. Swept the Astros. Swept the Rangers. We've overtaken Texas. And we did so on the back of Nelson Velasquez, who had three home runs in this series, and Cole Reagans, who put up 10 strikeouts. What an effort. What a series. And this team just doesn't want to give up. Too much fight, and we don't even know who we're facing yet in the next round. It'll be one of either Tampa Bay or Minnesota. And I'll leave that for the surprise in the next episode. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Take it easy.